Hello, it's Ben Holkin here, Associate Professor in Mechanical and Mechatronic Engineering at UTS and um, down here in the Vibration Lab. Uh, this video is about the uh, use of uh, power amplifiers and electrodynamic shakers. We've just received a brand new LPA100 power amplifier from, uh, from Brun and Pierre, LDS LPA100. And we just wanted to validate that with the box, everything works okay, and, and at the same time take the opportunity to prepare a video. Some of the things here on the bench, there's a couple of shakers. I've got a V101 shaker here, a V201 shaker on a trunnion here, and a V406 uh, on a trunnion here, various cables you can see. Um, there's also an LPA600 amplifier down here. This is a larger amplifier which is fit for purpose only with this v406 shaker our lpa 100 amplifier will drive this shaker as well as these two small shakers but it's a separate cable so this is the dedicated cable to go from the amplifier to this shaker there's a different cable to connect the 600 the lpa 600 to the v406 for these two small shakers you can see that they've got these uh, screw connectors on the front here and we use therefore this uh, Cable. There are a couple of these cables. For the LPA100, the differentiator between the 100 and the 600 is that it's just a two pin connection to this cable. So I can go around the back here. I'm not going to show this on the video, um, but it's, it's relatively easy. It can only go in one way and it's, it's key mounted in and, and, and we connect it. And then this one's going to be connected into either one or the other of the shakers. It doesn't matter which way around, there's a brown and a blue. This is, uh, it's a a dynamic shaker, electrodynamic shaker, so we can connect it either way around, doesn't matter on the polarity. I've also got here a DC response accelerometer connected via a, one of our bespoke power supplies. And my, uh, on, on the oscilloscope here, I'm, um, I'm visualizing the output from this transducer so that we can confirm that the, uh, the shaker performs as expected. I'm using a little bit of beeswax here to mount it, synthet synthetic beeswax. I'm mounting it onto the uh, armature of the, the shaker just carefully I mean, we do have to press it quite firmly and so that will deflect the spring on the suspension system there is a dust shield around here to stop things falling inside the shaker the dust shields on these shakers does eventually unfortunately start to deteriorate deteriorate a little bit um, but you do have to push that firmly down to get a good connection and then as you can see we're, we're measuring any vibration that I impart on the shaker um, in terms of the input to the shaker, what's driving the shaker, I'm actually also using the oscilloscope as a signal generator. Um, now if I had a T-piece I could um, just show you what the input looks like, but I'll borrow the cable from here and I'll connect that to this output here on the, on the, on the oscilloscope. So here's my wave generator on off functionality. I've got a bit of a DC offset on there at the moment. Um, that, does, that doesn't necessarily matter too much, although we perhaps can try to remove that offset. So this is this one here. Um, and I've just realized why our current limit was being triggered when we were driving it with a signal with a DC offset on. So that's now centered about zero hertz. I can also zero that in, so zero is in the middle. And we've got half a volt peak to peak, 40 hertz. Um, frequency. I can turn that off here. I'll reconnect my shaker, uh, my accelerometer there. And this one is going to be connected into the back of the amplifier. So there's a drive input here on the back of the amplifier. Again, I'm not coming around the back of the amplifier with the camera uh, to show that, but it's quite clearly laid out on the back of the amplifier where these things connect. So when we power up, so now we're all connected. Um, I can turn on the function before I power the amplifier. Um, when I power the amplifier, but it's normally better to have that turned off. Now I'm not showing you here, remember, I'm now looking at this one. Um, when I power this up with this button, um, it, it, it will always be turned off, right? So we keep this gain control turned all the way down. Normal practice would be to have the signal off, turn the amplifier on, um, then turn the wave output on, and then we can turn the gain control up slightly here. So it, it clicks initially, and that's now 
at zero amps and zero volts still, there's an input signal turned on of half a volt, and as I slowly increase the gain, I'll start to see some signals. So the, the shaker's now making a sinusoidal signal here, and you can see that measurement there on the, on the oscilloscope, and I can feel that with my finger here. Um, as I continue to increase the gain control, um, you'll see the voltage increases, the current increases, but at some point, we, we, we need a current limit in place to prevent any damage occurring to this shaker. So the current limit is set at one, at the minimum of one amp. Um, when we fully confirm that this is working properly, we'll put a little grommet on there to prevent people from adjusting the current limit. Please don't adjust the current limit without consultation for te lab technical support or an, an expert user. This is intentional to prevent damage occurring to the shaker. So I can really turn that signal up quite high and there should be no risk of me damaging the shaker. At some point the current limit will go over one amp and it will, an, an interlock will be triggered and that prevents damage occurring to the shaker and the, the amplifier essentially is disabled. Um, in some cases, if I happen to have my gain control turned up without, a, without the amplifier turned on, to prevent any damage occurring, let's say for example I had this turned up maximum and I had a 10 volt input signal connected to it and I was powered on, then it's easily possible otherwise that I can immediately subject the shaker to a huge vibration amplitude and damage the shaker. But there is a safety mechanism, mechanism in place and you can see that as soon as the gain is non-zero, the interlock comes on immediately. So it's preventing any output from the amplifier and it says reset gain here on the LCD. That means I have to turn the gain back to zero. Now the interlock has been disabled, the dial is set back to zero amps, zero volts on the output side, and then I can turn on my gain control. Again, I get my vibration. I'm measuring the signal here with the accelerometer. So there are some safety um, procedures in place to prevent any damage. There are a couple of other indicators on here. The distortion indicator will tell me if I've got, if I've got very distorted output signal. I've, ne I've rarely seen that one come on. The current indicator here is another interlock type. That's what happens when I turn the gain control up too high and I go over the one amp current limit. So that will then come on. If I'm also using this in, in combination with, with uh, a cooling fan, for example, then I might use a temperature, there might be a temperature indicator on with an extra signal coming in to indicate that the coils in my shaker have gone over temperature. That's obviously another way that we can tell if there's uh, impending damage about to occur to the shaker. If we put too much current in, we get too much heat in the windings in the electromagnet, eventually we, uh, the shielding will disintegrate, the wires will connect together and we get short circuit. The, the shaker is, is um, well that's the end of the shaker's life. And we want to try and look after our equipment here in the lab. We don't want to unnecessarily damage shakers. Please, if in doubt, ask somebody, ask myself, ask one of the technical support guys, ask another expert user for advice. If you're unsure, just stop, ask the question, think, we need to look after these devices. They're expensive devices and, um, and we need them to last for many years. Thank you very much. I hope that was useful.